So what is Elm's learning network? And why can I has care? So ELMS was originally a Drupal distribution. It was one Drupal distribution. One Drupal distribution with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of organic groups. All right, so it was basically open atrium um, with, uh, with education words put in like course and section. Right? Not that much different from open atrium, quite frankly, in the Drupal 6 land. In fact, there's a whole company you can look up that basically did the same thing. So why is there no D7 of Elms, right? There's D7 Elms Learning Network. The reason is that we've decided to get a lot more granular with the structure, right? So there's a distribution called CIS. There's a distribution called MOOC because I like the namespace. There's one called CLE for Elms Collaborative Learning Environment. Um, we use PWIC for analytics, uh, which is a non-Drupal. It's kind of another, another reason to do things in this fashion. Um, and there's Elms Media, which is for media distribution, things like that. And then there's iCore, which is kind of a secret project right now. So these are all separate distributions. And then basically, instead of having one of the, you know, a bajillion organic groups here, and this visual is going to get a little ridiculous, we have um, a effectively a clouded organic group, if you will. And so in the CIS, which is kind of, you know, if we draw this a little better here, we've got more of the CIS as the center point. This is where people pass through, whether or not they realize it, it might be uh, an LTI launch coming from a, um, We'll call it outdated system. You can draw your own conclusion there. So if we have an LTI launch coming from an outdated system, uh, what we can do is pass people through seamlessly to where they actually want to go, which might be the course content in this example, uh, which is typically run by the MOOC distribution. Right, so they never know that they're in CIS, um, but what CIS is helping do is create this clouded organic group I, I mentioned. So let's say that we have uh, CLE is providing our studio environment uh, as we typically refer to it. Um, and then they've passed through, right? So they've come through an LTI launch and we're given something like section X, right? And so section X tells us everything about this person, where they are, you know, the fact that it's a course that has to do with stuff. Right? And so there's basically a Drupal site that lives out at each of these locations. Right? So we've got a stuff out here, we've got a stuff out here as individual Drupal sites. Using web services, these two talk to each other. Right? This thing called XML is really useful uh, for talking back and forth between systems. Right? And so what we do is when CIS notices user coming in via LTI launch or other, you know, any other method, this is just for pre, you know, preceding their access kind of a thing. Uh, we get section X. Section X is a node in the CIS. And in fact, it's actually not even a full qualified node. It's a field collection, but um, we're not going to get into that. So it's a field collection in CIS. And then it goes out and it will relay this LTI launch or again, you know, just generic access. Um, and so we've set this up so that then out here in the, the course area, we actually have a group and this is an organic group and it's called this, right? So it's called section X. I'm not gonna write, we'll just do X, right? So there's organic group X out there. Uh, it also then will ping all of the tools that have need for this information and create an organic group called X. And it will allow student you know, Y to be in there. So student Y is related to this group so that we can do things like uh, manage dates and things in the CIS as to when section X is no longer valid, right? And then we can have these web services 
look up that information nightly um, and say, hey, is X still valid? Because if X is no longer valid, right? So we cross out X, it's kind of funny. Maybe I should use a different color for that. So <laughs> we X X, right? Um, then that means that student Y that's related to it should also no longer have access everywhere. So we can start to do little things like that. Why is this a better structure for doing this? Well, for one, maintainability, right? CIS can have lots of new functionality added that have no impact whatsoever uh, against MOOC or against CLE or anything else in here. So what ends up happening is we're basically sandboxing everything from each other, right? So this does not have direct implications for that, does not have direct implications for that. Furthermore, based on the structure, let's say that we have uh, stuff, right? This is our example course. Stuff is actually made up of it, its components, right? So stuff has data that lives in CIS and stuff has data that lives in MOOC and stuff has data that lives in CLE, right? But stuff itself doesn't really live anywhere. It doesn't live in any one location. And because of that, that means stuff next semester doesn't need to use that maybe, or doesn't need to use this for just this one certain instructor. Or maybe uh, we're working on a new experimental thing for stuff, right? And it's called MOOC 2, right? Maybe there's some brand new buzz phrase that means absolutely nothing. Uh, we'll call it like shooks, right? Maybe that stands for uh, uh, silly, happy, open online course stuff, right? And that's a brand new concept. Everyone in ed tech's like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And we want to experiment with that in stuff. Stuff doesn't have to mess up or impact or have any implications whatsoever against thing, right? So course thing, maybe course thing is run by a faculty member that, you know, doesn't want to be out on the bleeding edge. So thing just talks to course information system and thing talks to generic old MOOC, right? So five years down the road, we could still have thing with its old space, right? We'll call this MOOC. And at that point, maybe this is MOOC 1.0, right? And then we could have stuff, which is super innovative, right? It's using those shooks system, right? It's a brand new thing. It's way a new way of learning never existed previously. It can do that. And we still utilize the same data resource to stitch the experiences together, right? And maybe they use the same service for collaborative online learning, right? And so Thing can basically form this quasi network, right? Where Thing's network as a course, its learning network becomes MOOC 1.0, CLE 1.0 and CIS. But stuff, which is being more innovative, is shooks, which is a crazy thing, and CLE and CIS, right? And because these are running against different sandboxed instances, uh, it wouldn't even matter if thing was using, so we'll say thing was using um, MOOC, right? And then stuff comes along. And stuff is also using its own space called MOOC. Right, but then it wants to make some change to it. Maybe shooks didn't work out. And so the thing it wants to backport is, um, we'll say comments on the page, right? Maybe that's the hot new thing in ed tech this year is commenting on the page. Oh my gosh, students are demanding it. They need to be able to do that. The instance that stuff has is completely separate from the instance that thing has. They might both be running something called MOOC, but this is still a different Drupal site. So this is Drupal 1 and this is Drupal 2. So these individual tools that live out here are all being created off a simple repeatable pattern, which is in this case, we're calling that simple repeatable pattern MOOC, but they can still deviate from each other after the point of creation. And so we can allow people to innovate. We can allow people to 
stay in the past. We can allow people to jump out ahead in just certain tool sets or utilize certain new tool sets without it negatively impacting the networks that other people are forming. All right, so if someone's course works really well, then I, why am I gonna dictate to them that they need to upgrade and change everything about it? All right, if it works really well for them, then they and they like the tools that they already have access to, why would we force them to use this new tool, right? What we want instead is we do want them to update and we want them to use new tools. But part of this becomes um, kind of a competitive atmosphere that we're trying to create based on, um, hey, they have cool stuff, right? So in the case of stuff, right? Stuff has something that, or doesn't have something that Thing has, right? Thing has this shiny new tool and, sh and uh, Thing wins all kinds of wonderful awards for the shiny new tool that they've built. And everyone goes, oh my gosh, faculty member X, your shiny new tool is amazing stuff over here is going to be sad and if stuff is sad maybe stuff will want to be the one also using shiny new tool or maybe they want to work and build a brand new shiny new tool an even better and bigger one the next year All right so elms learning network isn't really about squiggly lines right and all this silliness it's about that method design methodology that everything is disconnected and deployed independently but it's very repeatable patterns all connected via xml web services so we can bridge the old with the new and newer and newer and newer and newer and newer right so that things that don't even exist yet will be able to connect together into our scaffolding use the same repeatable pattern to generate new spaces, sandbox everything that's being created. And if we're doing our job the right way, as far as XML is concerned, we don't care anymore what this is, right? So maybe this is Drupal, All right? CIS, basically that's gonna have to be Drupal in some way, right? But if it's done and it creates the other sites, who cares? But what's to say that someone doesn't make a really good ed tech tool that's done in Joomla? or done in WordPress. I mean, it could happen, right? Why would we deny them access to this if we've written the APIs to be able to talk to each other? These are all very, you know, vi um, vibrant web projects that have lots of development hours invested in them. So if we use XML, we're no longer landlocked into one PHP framework or even PHP for that matter, we could connect to other things. Um, right now, Elms Learning Network comes with uh, support for PWIC out of the box and actually comes packaged with PWIC. PWIC is non-Drupal. It's not even remotely Drupal, um, but it's an analytics engine. It's a, you know, basically uh, Google Analytics in a box kind of a thing. Um, this is gonna come out of the box, able to talk to the rest of these automatically. And so PWIC is cross-platform with other um, content management systems. So it could theoretically be set up to automatically talk to Joomla, WordPress, Drupal, etc. So the idea is not about just building the next Drupal distribution for tomorrow and selling it to people. It's about building in a mindset and a development methodology and a philosophy of design that this is the way that we're going to deploy and build things going forward is all web services based. We're going to focus the functionality of these things while still allowing people the ability to innovate in any one of these spaces independent of another. And again, even independent of another, right? So, I mean, we could have course one versus course two. Course one can be extremely forward thinking. Course two can be using technology that we authored three or four years ago. There's plenty of courses still doing that and they function just fine. Uh, whenever we would revise them, maybe then we take the opportunity to step back into a full on course revision to get course two up to snuff with where course one now is. But we could even keep around the, the old learning network of course two. All right. So it's, it's about design flexibility. It's about maintainability from a, a developer perspective, um, as well as being able to use the, the components individually. You, there's nothing saying you couldn't just run MOOC by itself or CLE or the media thing, right? 
maybe you just want a, a system that's focused on any of those three things. Maybe you can, uh, there's actually a group right now that's running, uh, running these without, uh, it's not running CLE, but it's running media and MOOC talking to each other uh, without a CIS. You don't need CIS to do this stuff. CIS is providing the automation, but if that's too much for you, then why not just use these individual tools? It's very modular approach. It's basically modular distributions, um, which is, you know, an approach modules with, you know, just code functionality in Drupal. That's something that's been Drupal for a long time, uh, but now we're stepping it up and taking it to the distribution level. So I hope this was at least mildly interesting. And if you see this, you know, tweet me. That means you get a cookie or something that you stuck around this long. Um, but if you'd like to learn more about the project, BTO Pro on the Twitter webs, uh, on D.O. Um, and if you want to take Elm's Learning Network for a ride, there is a Vagrant instance up on GitHub right now that you can pull down and uh, start playing around with it. See how much automation's in place. See why I need to doodle for um, 989 seconds to, to prove a point.